Hello, my name is Caroline Penny. I'm the National Education and Training Manager here at JUZO in the United States. Today, in our short time together, we're going to talk about the basics of compression therapy. I'd like to encourage you to reach out to me if you have any questions at all. My contact information is at the end of the slideshow. Today, I'd like to give a brief introduction to JUZO so you know who we are and what we do. We'll also talk about medical grade compression garments, how they work and why they work. And I think it's also important for us to discuss how to take care of your medical grade compression garment and understand some important pointers and tips on donning and doffing. And lastly, I'd like to leave you with some good patient resources and tips. I'd like to take this opportunity to share a little bit about JUZO with you. JUZO is an international manufacturer and distributor of quality compression garments. And we actually have two locations that employ over 880 employees worldwide. Something we're very proud of is the fact that back in 2012, we celebrated 100 years in business. We have a location in a small Bavarian village just south of Munich in Eichich, Germany. We also have a location right here in the United States in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. Cuyahoga Falls lies right in between Akron and Cleveland. And something we're very proud of is the fact that almost all of our products are manufactured right here in the United States. So we're very happy and proud that we can keep jobs here in the USA, and we're also happy that we can manufacture and distribute our garments, so that means a faster turnaround time for you to get your garments after you've ordered them. Today, our discussion will center around medical grade compression garments. However, it's important for you to know we do a lot of other things. We have a full line of over-the-counter support stockings and socks, which are going to be largely your prophylactic and vascular products. We are also pioneers in using silver threads that we knit directly into our garments, which is really great for anybody that has skin problems or skin integrity issues. We also have a full line of application aids and accessories, prosthetic shrink shrinkers and suspension sleeves, and we also manufacture and distribute orthopedic braces and supports. Something new is that we will be launching a new product, the Juzo Compression Wrap, in just a few short weeks. Today, in our time together, we'll discuss the basics of medical grade compression. We'll talk about when and why you should wear your medical grade compression. We'll also take a closer look at the care of the product, replacement, uh, and also washing and drying instructions. And we'll also look at donning and doffing and patient resources. So, medical grade compression garments, what do they do and how do they work? We know that a compression garment helps to manage a condition. Its job is to prevent reaccumulation of fluid. So, it's important for you to understand that a medical grade compression garment is meant to be donned at edema's most reduced state. And that is because a medical grade compression garment's job is simply to preserve the size of the limb. So when your arm or your leg, your limb, is at its most reduced state, it's typically first thing in the morning, that's when you want to put your compression garment on. And it's also important for you to have a commitment to compliance. The only way that you can properly manage or control the edema is if you make a commitment to wear your medical grade compression garment every day. We know that medical grade compression garments are generally only working on your superficial vessels, the vessels that lie right underneath your skin. So again, they are just helping to manage that edema and not allow for it to reaccumulate in the limb. Lymphedema is a chronic and progressive condition. So without proper management of it, the disease process will progress. That's, again, why it's so important for you to take compliance in wearing your compression garments very seriously. I like to think about wearing your compression garment as managing a condition. Just like you wear eyeglasses to manage a condition or you wear a hearing aid to manage a condition. You don't wake up in the morning and think, huh, I think I'd like to hear today. Maybe I'll put that hearing aid on. Or I'd like to see today. I think I'll go ahead and wear my glasses. It's just something you naturally do to manage your condition. That's how you need to think about compression therapy. So how do these compression garments work? 
we know that there's three things, three major things that you need to consider when you think about how a medical grade compression garment does its job. First of all, you need to think about the compression level. The compression levels are broken into four different classes. And you'll notice that there are two different sets of ranges for each one of these compression classes. The top ranges are compression levels for circular knit or seamless compression garments. And the bottom ranges represent seamed or flat knit garments. And you also need to make sure that a medical grade compression garment has graduated compression. So not only is it important for a compression garment to test at what it says on the label, so if it's a circular knit class one, we would want to test that garment to ensure that we're finding 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury, most distal on the garment, most distal on the limb. We also need to test to make sure that you have a lesser version of that compression as you move up the limb towards the heart. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because after all, we're trying to help promote the flow of fluids back up towards the heart. So with a graduated compression, that allows the support of your circulatory systems to help move fluid back up to the top of your body. So graduated compression is very important part of the puzzle. And now you'll also have to understand that there are two types of pressure to be familiar with, working pressure and resting pressure. So when you think about the qualities of pressure, you have to understand what type of compression that you're in, the tension, the number of layers, and even the condition of the materials can play into deciding which category your compression is going to fall into. So a working pressure is usually going to be found in bandaging or a compression wrap. So bandaging and compression wraps have a high stiffness factor. So that means that they're omitting a lot of pressure against the tissue. And a working pressure garment or bandaging is going to give a temporary pressure. And that temporary pressure will be induced only when your muscle contracts. So if you're wearing bandaging and you stand up and you walk around, let's say, and you're inducing your muscles, then when your muscles are contracted, that's going to help move fluid both on a superficial and deep venous level. So working pressure, bandages, and wraps, they will actually move fluid out of the limb. Resting pressure is the category that most of your medical grade compression falls into. And a resting pressure garment is going to exert a constant permanent pressure. Doesn't matter if you're contracting your muscle or not, it's just a constant pressure. And this kind of puts it all together for you. If you look, the inelastic type of compression that you see at the top of this chart have kind of a short stretch recoil. So that means when you try to pull it, it's not very forgiving. It's not going to give you a lot of stretch. And since it has a higher tension, it's going to be working a little bit harder against your tissue. And with that working pressure, it will help to evacuate fluid out of the limb. Elastic type of compression, if you were to take a garment, a medical grade compression garment and pull it now it's going to be able to give you a bigger stretch, a longer stretch. And that type of a garment is going to emit a high resting pressure. And if you remember, a resting pressure garment is just a constant permanent pressure. And it's only going to preserve the size of the limb. It will not actually evacuate fluids out of the limb. It's just going to preserve the size of the limb. And really, if you think about it, the amount of resistance a compression offers is directly related to the type of product that you're using. The more resistance that a product uh, applies to the tissue, the more containment you have. And the more resistance that's applied to the tissue, the greater the pressure you have. So the more density of the knit, the stiffer the fabric, the harder it's going to be working. So when you think about the density of the knit, 
In compression garment world, we can break that down into two categories, circular knit products and flat knit products. Circular knit products have a lot of great two-way stretch and they typically conform to the tissues. So any soft, loose hanging tissue, a circular knit is going to follow those lobes and folds. A flat knit garment is made with a denser knit and it is going to provide more resistance against the tissue. So it's going to work a little bit harder than the circular knit. This is a great slide that can give you an example of each of these types of fabrics. If you look on the left side, this is an example of a flat knit product. A flat knit product can be made for any size or any shape. So your really small circumferential measurements will fall into this category and your really large circumferential measurements. And any drastic changes in circumferential measurements will also be a good candidate for a flat knit product. And if you look at this lady on the right side of your screen, she's a great example of someone who's a good candidate for a circular knit product. She still has anatomical shaped limbs and you can see that she has bilateral lymphedema um, and she's using a circular knit product to preserve the size of her limbs. Circular knit products come off of a machine that knit in a circular fashion. And you'll also hear circular knit products being called seamless. So if I were to put in the measurement codes on a circular knit machine, the machine will knit around and around and around in a circular motion. So that's the reason it doesn't have a seam. And when a circular knit product is produced, you'll find that it is typically meant for someone that has an anatomical shape. They are uh, very comfortable, they're aesthetically appealing, and most of your circular knits are going to be made for standard sizes, meaning I've taken your measurements for an arm sleeve, I plug it into a size chart, and I can pull that box off of the shelf and wear my product. Sometimes people need to have a product made especially for them, um, and that's called custom. So some of our circular fabrics you can have custom made. Flat knit products come off of a machine that looks quite different. So on this type of a machine, uh, the product is laser cut and then we sew the two sides of the product together. So a flat knit product always has a seam. And since the flat knit is produced with a denser knit, you're going to have excellent therapeutic results. So this is an example of a flat knit product after it comes off of the machine laser cut into a glove and then we put both sides of that glove together and then we sew the seams on and this is your finished glove. So now you know three major things that are important for a medical grade compression garment to do its job. You have to consider the compression level, you also need to make sure that the product is graduated and you need to think about the density of the knit. The more dense the knit, the higher containment you have. The more containment you have, the harder the product is working. It's important for us to also think about how do you take care of a compression garment. And when you decide to get a medical grade compression garment, it's important for you to talk to your fitter about the replacement of the product, the care instructions, and really how to protect the garment. Every manufacturer has their own set of replacement uh, ideals, but really a standard in the industry is you should replace your compression garment at about every six months. And I highly encourage you to have your measurements for your garments taken by a professional fitter. A certified professional fitter should take your, your measurements for your compression garment. And as I said, standard in the industry, you need to replace your compression garment every six months. Your compression garment has uh, some elasticity uh, fibers and they will lose their elasticity over time and so then the garments not going to be working the way that it should and you'll have the edema reaccumulate in the limb so that's why it's really important to pay attention to getting that garment replaced 
And if you think about it, it's very important too to not just call up and order your garment, but go in and see that professional fitter every six months so they can retake your measurements. A lot of things can happen in six months. Uh, you could lose weight, gain weight, have any type of physical changes, and those can impact your compression garment's job. Maybe it won't be able to work as hard as it should if you've lost a lot of weight. Or maybe it'll have a tourniquet effect on your arm if you've gained some weight. So it's important to see your fitter every six months. Another thing that you'll need to make sure is that you master the idea of donning and doffing. You'll need to definitely be able to demonstrate your ability to don the compression garment in front of that certified fitter. Um, and one of the main things that I recommend is invest in a pair of donning gloves. Donning gloves are meant to protect the garment and they're also meant to distribute your compression once you've donned the garment. So donning gloves are sort of like uh, dishwashing gloves. At Juzo, what you see in the picture, we have donning gloves that are actually latex free. And they have a really nice grip on the palms, so they're really effective at helping to get that garment on and distribute that compression effectively. So definitely want to invest in a pair of donning gloves. They'll last forever, and they will protect your investment. The other thing that I would recommend is that you use a garment bag. Make sure that you use a garment bag when you are laundering your compression garment. So at Juzo, we have a great um, kit that has the donning gloves, a sample of our detergent, and the laundering bag. And that is a wonderful thing because really, once you purchase it, you're not going to have to replace the donning gloves or the garment bag. We um, definitely encourage you, no matter what, to just make sure that you're protecting your garment when you're laundering it. So always use a garment bag anytime that you're washing or drying your garment. And let's talk a little bit about how you take care of your garment. So you need to wash your garments every day. And those garments need to go into that garment bag. And then you're going to throw it in the machine and wash it on the low heat setting. And you'll need to use a mild detergent that doesn't have any bleach or softeners or fragrance. So you'll need to machine wash that garment and then you want to have that garment go into the machine and get dried. Again, it needs to be on the low heat setting and in the garment bag. Our garments have memory threads and the only way that we can restore their efficacy or restore those memory threads to their original um, use is by the garment getting into the dryer. So that heat will allow those memory threads to go back into place. Now, remember, you don't want to use anything that's going to soften or compromise the efficacy of the garment. So please don't use dryer sheets. And again, you don't want to use any detergents that have any additives with softening agents in them. It's also important for you to know the return policy of whomever you're dealing with. And each company has a different type of return policy. At Juza, we have a 14-day fit guarantee, and that's something that we're really proud of. We want our patients to have optimal fit. We want the garments to be comfortable, and we want them to do their job. If something's not right, then we want to make sure that you have something that's going to do the job. Uh, you'll need to, again, order your products through a durable medical equipment provider or um, a dealer who is carrying the Juzo product. But we have a very generous return policy. And you'll also need to discuss donning and doffing with your uh, durable medical equipment provider, your therapist. And that person will make sure that you understand how to get the garment on and how to get it off before you walk out the door. They won't just show you pictures. You want them to watch you put that on and watch you take it off. If you're just watching somebody, it's really difficult to mimic that once you get home. So very, very important. At Juzo, we have a number of donning devices and one for the arm sleeve is a Juzo Slippy. 
and it really makes getting the arm sleeve on very easy and it allows for independent donning and what you're looking at here in the picture is a lower extremity donning device our slippy gator again allowing for independent donning and doffing we um also like i said encourage you very much to make sure that you Practice this in front of your fitter before you walk out the door so you know what you're doing. We also have um, the banana peel method. So with that, if you don't need a device, you can kind of turn that garment so that it's halved and then you'll work the garment up the arm um, in small sections. You definitely don't want to bunch the garment all down in one area because then you'll have all that compression forming and it'll be really really difficult and even sometimes dangerous to get the garment on and off when it's all bunched up in one area so just remember try to plan ahead set yourself up for success make that follow-up six-month appointment at the time right before you walk out the door sometimes you can also ask that fitter to give you a reminder phone call or a note and make sure that you are coming in for your appointment and getting that garment replaced at that six month mark so again it's just so important to have that regular monitoring and communication with that fitter so that we can make sure you're in a safe and effective compression garment Often, your fitter can be a great, great resource to you. Uh, maybe you'll, you're told by your physician or your therapist that you need to exercise a little more, lose weight, that type of thing. And often, your fitter will have a plethora of resources for you. So ask them. Um, sometimes I've even seen gyms uh, run specials or programs geared especially towards lymphedema patients. So don't be afraid to ask if there are any discounts or resources available that can help you on your journey. Often your uh, durable medical equipment provider will handle your insurance for you. And you have to remember, they don't have to do that, but it is a complimentary service and they will usually do things for you such as um, submit any inquiries for you, do any follow-up, and even submit your forms. So it's important to remember, you know, find out how that's going to be handled, if they're going to be doing it on your behalf or if you need to submit the things on your own. At the end of the day, you as a patient will surround yourself with your own patient care team. And sometimes you have a team of four or five people or even 10 people. It really depends on you as an individual. But your patient care team is there to support you. And that fitter is a big part of that team. Often they're seeing you from the moment you're, you know, you start treatment all the way through until after you've had treatment. And so don't be afraid to have that open communication with them. Ask them for resources. So hopefully you will have success in managing your condition um, by really working together with your patient care team to find optimal lymphedema management. I'd like to thank you for your time today. And if you have any questions at all on any of the information you, um, you've seen, just feel free to give me a call. And also you can follow us on Facebook. If you're not already following us on Facebook, it's a great idea. Uh, we have a patient-centered Facebook page and we run contests on there and give lots of great, great resources uh, on that page. You can also find some educational resources on the juzoacademy.com page and that has a full listing of webinars that maybe you might be interested in learning more. It also has a spot where you can actually log on to video tutorials on donning and doffing. So maybe you want a refresher after you've left that durable medical equipment provider on how to get your garment on and off. So good luck with your journey and thank you for your time today.